to say welcome to Nico, and she's going to introduce our uh, Honor Society president, who is then going to introduce all the students who have received um, honors this year graduating. And students, when you your name is read, because um, Ali and gang is going to are going to read it, you're very much allowed to unmute and give a you who thanks to whomever you want to thanks real quickly because if you do that zoom will isolate your face and record it so that way other people can watch it at a later date and time so i will go to mute and i'll turn this over to nico hi all it is amazing to see all of you looking so fabulous on my screen it was very much a pleasure to get to advise the honor society lambda paeta this year i'm really looking forward to continuing the work next year i also just quickly want to thank mike and helen who really made this zoom event possible and Srila sarkar for her guidance as well with the honor society and let's go ahead and introduce ali evan who's the president of the honor society this year to give the welcome toast hi everyone uh, my name is ali even and i'm this year's calm honor society president I just wanted to welcome all of you and thank you so much for coming out all the way to your laptop <laughs> to celebrate. Uh, so I just have a short thing I wanted to read. Um, it echoes a lot of the things Professor Whalen mentioned, but I think it's important to reiterate it. Um, so with everything that's going on in the world, it might feel weird to celebrate ourselves, but even with our sadness and anger or fear, we should acknowledge that we are, have accomplished so much. We are soon to be college graduates, and that is really no small feat. So we need to be proud of our accomplishment and our achievements, and we are so worthy of celebration. But we didn't get here alone. There's so many people that have played a part in our success. Our friends, our classmates, our family, and of course our wonderful professors, many of whom are here today. All of them have contributed their time, support, and compassion through our last four years. While it is our accomplishment, their love and generosity has certainly made the journey sweeter. Though this year is not at all what any of us expected, obviously, I am so grateful that we are able to come together, even if it's only virtually. So if you have a glass, raise it. <laughs> and this is for you and for all your supporters, communications class of 2020. All right, thank you, Ali. Let's also go ahead and have all the officers unmute themselves as we read the names of the honor students. And so students, if you want to unmute yourselves, as Professor Whalen said, just to very quickly thank your parents or anyone else, um, feel free to do so. Let's start by having uh, the outgoing honor society officers introduce themselves and say hello, um, beginning with Ali again. Actually, I was, we're gonna have Courtney start this one off. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Courtney. I'm currently secretary for the society and I apologize if I butcher anyone's names, but I'm gonna try my best. Okay. Reina Abu Garbier. Elizabeth Alderman. Ijoma and Yanwu. Elizabeth Bollard. Ashley Bradick. Thank you guys for coming out. Alessandra Cashion. Marguerite De Luzignan. Alejandra De Ambrosio. Thanks to my whole family who came today. Olivia De Graca. Woohoo, thank you. Kendall Deitch. Thanks. Isabella Escuera. <laughs> Allie Evan. Thank you to have all my wonderful professors, especially. You guys are amazing. Kaylee Falakoshia. And Naima Fonrose, who will be taking over the next set of names. Hi, I'm Naima Fonrose, and I'm the outgoing treasurer for the Communication Honor Society, and I'll be reading the next set of names. So Cameron Fortmeyer, Elena Granite. Yeah, thank you. Ariel Greer. Thank you. 
Mary Harding, Kelsey Hedge, Monique Hernandez. Thank you, everyone. Nicole. Arriba. Nicole Jacobus. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Avery James. Thanks, everyone. Rebecca Kinslow. Melinda Kircher. Asha Krishna Morthy. Theodore Looney. Morgan Marr. And Ali and Ali Marachek. Okay, and I'll be writing the remaining names, starting off with Megan McLaughlin. Thank you. April Moreland. Margaret Newton. Courtney Nguyen. Thank you, everyone. Delaney Nothaft. Mariana Pereira, Stone Paletti. Hey, thanks for coming out, everybody. <laughs> Woo! La <laughs> Lauren Rapasarda, Bridget Reynolds, Carolina Salame, Thank you. <laughs> Abigail Smith. <laughs> Haley Trio yeah. and Amanda Woodcher. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's our 2020 Calm Honor Society class. Everybody wants to unmute and give a round of applause. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Hey. Uh, that was my dog. So thank Sally, Mary, Naima, Courtney, and uh, Ali, now if you could go ahead and please announce our 2020-2021 officers. Yeah, it's really exciting. So we have four new officers for next year. Um, our secretary is Annie Para. Our treasurer is Caitlin Sa. Our vice president is Katya Kek. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and our president is Andrew Canizario. Congratulations, everyone. A round of applause for the new officers coming in. Thank you, Ali and Nico. And for those of you um, uh, not uh, familiar with it, just so you know that the Honor Society is set up that a student graduates with honors um, who has. Uh, uh, graduated the 3.5 above and has done some service uh, for the for the for the university um, uh, for the and and the department um, and uh, we're up to 95 people so that's great um, I, I love I love to see that um, the next person I have to introduce who's going to introduce our first award is a professor in film uh, Trisha Creason Valencia Trisha yeah Okay, you guys already know what a, cri a crier I am. I cannot believe that Mike asked me to speak because like you can already hear, I'm already crying. <laughs> I love you guys so much and I'm so proud of you. Um, Hold it together, Trisha. I'm not I'm going to, but it's okay. We're all about showing emotion, right guys? <laughs> um, okay, so I have been asked to introduce Katrina. So I'm gonna read so I don't lose my mind completely, Katrina. <laughs> Katrina is, simply stated, the best. She embodies everything that we hope to see in emerging filmmakers. Passion for the work, bravery that pushes her to do new things, and a clear voice as a film director. Okay, started. Katrina approaches everything, and I mean everything, with an eagerness and an enthusiasm that is electrifying to be around. She possesses a positive attitude that strengthens and encourages her collaborators to keep going, even when faced with the inevitable obstacles of filmmaking. 
She's relentless in her pursuit of perfection, but the ideal of perfection doesn't paralyze her during the process. She stays in it, writing, rewriting, shooting, reshooting, gathering more footage, cutting, recutting, seeking feedback, and cutting again. Her ridiculously strong work ethic carries her through the daunting process that is filmmaking. Katrina is a seeker of truth. Her scholarly contribu contributions in class discussions are top notch. She always goes above and beyond expectations for assigned coursework and it shows in the work that she produces. She's intellectually curious, constantly seeking out new material to watch and to read. She's always looking for life experiences that will enhance her educational journey with a level of maturity and a sense of purpose that is going to serve her very, very well in the real world. I cannot wait to welcome her into the ranks of professional women filmmakers, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Yeah, Katrina! Yeah, Katrina! Woo! Hey. And congratulate Katrina. And Woo. Katrina received the Katrina! Woo! 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 <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Trisha. I don't even know what to say. Um, I am so grateful to you, Trisha, and to all the faculty in the communication department. I feel like I can trace so many of my opportunities back to those rela my relationships with um, you guys, and I just really, um, me and all of the rest of the, my peers, I think would agree that that's really what makes the Santa Clara educational experience stellar. Uh, I'm, I can't express enough how grateful I am for that. Um, and also, of course, I want to thank my parents and my grandparents who have always, they're here. Thank you for coming and watching this. And they've always supported me 100% and um, been my number one fan. So I really can't thank everybody here enough for, for all that. And I'm excited to be an alumni. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Katrina. Um, oh, Katrina, Katrina has received the McCarthy um, Award up for the department um, for outstanding senior graduating in film uh, and focusing on film. Um, our, our next award, uh, I know she was having difficulty. Lisa, did you, were you able to get on? Lisa Davis? Yes, I'm here, I'm okay. Um, Zoom, Zoom is telling me that I'm unstable, but Zoom doesn't know the half of it. <laughs> um, thank you, Mike. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> um, I am, thrilled, thrilled um, to be able to give this award. Um, it has been my pleasure to watch um, Matt Duff grow into a brilliant writer, a skilled reporter, researcher, information seeker, and just a tremendous human. Um, he has impeccable judgment and always seeks to highlight important issues. He is skilled at turning really complicated information into an interesting story. Um, and he often chooses to pursue stories that are much wider than um, either a student perspective or the university. Um, he is someone who is genuinely curious about the world. In one case, he brought to life the cultural evolution of a particular neighborhood by telling stories that were rooted along a popular running path. Um, in another, he dug into the prosecution of San Jose's Church of Cannabis um, with a really professional level of reporting. Um, he regularly brings a broad perspective to our groups, um, to our practicum, and to the classroom. Um, and uh, in, in one case, Matt chose to raise the bar on what is already a rigorous curriculum in communication law by taking it as an honors course. And, and in, in order to do this, he undertook a deep dive into hate speech in America. And the result was um, a dynamic presentation, um, a class lecture, and, and he really taught his fellow students the importance of this conflict and its threats to the First Amendment. And there's more. <clears throat> Um, Matt has devoted himself to community service inside and outside the university. He's a peer mentor. He's an active member of the Honor Society. He volunteers at the Bill Wilson Center for Homeless Youth and Families in Crisis. And in our department, he is a tremendous contributor who noticeably enhances every group he participates in. It is my great honor um, to, uh, to award this McCarthy Prize in Journalism to Matthew Duff.
And feel free to unmute and give them a, congr a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Matt, did you make it? Hi, I'm here. Do you hear me? Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really grateful to all of my professors, especially my professors of Adam journalism, as Professor Kelly and, of course, Professor Davis. Um, yeah, it's been a real gift just really introducing me to journalism and showing me uh, just, uh, how, much, how much fun it can be and um, all the passion and skill that you bring to it is really incredible. So I'm so grateful to all of you and a shout out to my parents and my grandparents if they made it here. Um, they've done more for me than I could begin to say. So thank you guys. Thank you, Matt. Wonderful. Um, moving on, our, um, uh, our next presenter of the final McCarthy Award is Professor Justin Bourne. Thanks, Mike. Um, it's great to see all your faces. Uh, this is, as weird as this is, this is also an excellent uh, um, uh, forum. So I, um, and I actually wrote something out. For those of you who know me in class, this is kind of a, a first for me to read something. So here we go. I just want to make sure I get these words right. I'm so honored to present this Justin T. McCarthy Award for Voice to Ashley Braddock. Uh, to me, voice is so much more than what is said by the person themselves. I firmly believe that those who use their voice well do so to amplify the voices of others. If I had to think of one primary reason why Ashley is so deserving of this award, that would be the reason. Um, I've had the pleasure of watching her grow as a critical thinker and writer over the past few years. I first met Ashley when she enrolled in my training and development course in the fall of 2018. She had just recently transferred to Santa Clara University and knew very few, if anyone, in the class. She quickly partnered with some of the other students and worked on developing a training module that was focused on how to improve customer service at parking and transportation services. Their group's goal was to try and help an important and often misunderstood campus group to develop their voice more effectively. In Ashley's final reflection for the class, she said that her favorite part of the course was seeing her team members grow alongside her. She then enrolled in my section of, of every comm student's favorite class, of course, Comm 110. Her final paper focused on how sportscasters' credibility is often influenced by gender stereotypes and roles. I remember uh, when Ashley came to uh, my, my office hours one day, she commented to me, uh, that she felt as a woman who was heavily involved in sport in sports that she would love to find a way to work toward easing those gender disparities in the field. I want to point out uh, that it was in this class where I learned something very important about Ashley. Not only is she a talented writer and thinker, she also was keen on expressing her voice right up to the page limit of the assignment. In fact, she would regularly ask me if the maximum page count um, uh, on the assignments were required. She has a lot to say. And I'm so glad that she did in each one of my courses. Through uh, the other courses she took with me, she explored topics in her writing about conflict and mediation strategies, sports organizations, development of organizational culture, and the importance of having more female representation in sports. Her senior thesis explored how organizations socialize their members based on their status as full or part-time. Her primary argument was that the socialization process is key for future success in an organization, and those part-time employees should have a similar experience to the full-time ones. You may notice a theme in each of the examples that I brought up. She focuses her efforts on how reducing what may seem like insignificant or small disparities between groups can lead to more well-developed organizations and ultimately help to build more humane and just organizations. Um, I think that this is true of her community work in the San Jose Sharks, where she helps to bring ice hockey to communities with varying social economic status. To quote from her nomination material, besides being an excellent student in classes who has effectively juggled the job with the San Jose Sharks in outreach with low income communities, Ashley has used her voice to create campaigns in environmental communication, to a website on the history of mental illness, to powerful commentary on the indigenous history of the Silicon Valley. In her final reflection for thesis, she said that one of her best moments at Santa Clara was helping to hire a faculty member in our department. I think that this really exemplifies my first point and why Ashley is so deserving of this award. She was willing to put in work to ensure that her voice and the voices of her classmates would have a lasting effect on our department. 
Again, I'm so honored to present this Justin T. McCarthy Award for Voice to Ashley Braddock through her written work and her critical engagement with uh, communities around campus. She is an exemplar of, the, um, of what we hope a student earning a bachelor's degree in communication represents. Congratulations and never stop using your voice, especially to help amplify the voices of others. Well, let's unmute and give Ashley a round of applause. Thank you. Ashley, Thank are you Thank you, Professor here? Boren. So yes, here. I'm here. I'm crying, of course, because that's who I am. Um, Professor Boren, thank you so much. You definitely made me laugh and cry at the same time with the max page limits. I always went over and always commented on telling you that I was going over the page limits. Um, I first want to thank the four most important people in my life who have gotten me to this point. Thank you, mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa for the endless support and love that you give to me. Thank you, Aunt Cindy and Uncle Ken for joining tonight. And thank you to all the friends who have stuck by me through this whole journey. I know I'm not the easiest to work with, but I appreciate you guys basking in everything that I've been doing. And thank you to everyone who has joined me today to celebrate an incredible achievement. I finally want to thank Helen and Professor Hines for being individuals who have guided me through my chapter at SCU. And again, Professor Boren, you are my mentor. You have pushed me and allowed me to be me and flourish in my own ways. I will forever be grateful for the people who I've met at Santa Clara and who has contributed to my journey in college. Thank you everyone for being here today. It's an honor. Thank you. Congratulations, Ashley. Um, I, I want to, Helen, were you able, did your Wi-Fi stick out or not, Helen? I'm Oh, it's a hit or miss right now. Okay, so well then I'm gonna turn right it over to Helen Otero, who basically without, for those of you who don't know, she's our senior admin in the office, and for all intents and purposes, Helen runs our department, um, both from uh, keeping the faculty and staff, knowing where the heck they're going, and students what the heck they're doing. So um, Helen has a couple of shout outs and, um, and some honors that she wants to bestow upon a couple of our student workers, Helen. So today I'm presenting the award of service. The person receiving this award is someone very dear to me. Then again, all of our students in our major are very special, have a very special place in my heart. With this award, it's a huge honor to present. This is a person who has grown for the past four years um, that I've known them. The student is a double major and a minor. Whenever there's any fires in our department office, being shorthanded, needing coverage, and always helping assist the department front office without any hesitation. Not because it's their job working in the office, but their dedication as well to all our faculty, staff, and students. I don't think I've ever heard an answer, no, I can't, always with a smirk, not a problem. Tell them whatever you need, I'm here for you. This student has trained all my student assistants. Sorry guys, I'm a cry prior to in the office as my right hand who i'm not sure what i would do without her then again during this quarantine i have learned how much she does for us when my chair and i discuss additional awards he mentioned service and the first name that we thought was this person the last time we were awarded this and i did some research was five years ago wow right this will be one of the many services for dedication i look at this as a huge accomplishment to have at such a rare quality at such a young at such a young age I've had the honor of seeing who she is by hiring her during her during her incoming freshman year at SCU I'm pretty sure everyone knows who I'm talking about by now Connor Harada you're being recognized not only as my amazing student assistant my right hand but for your exquisite dedication to our department office, your ability to advise and assist students in such a meaningful level, and most of all, your incredible work ethic at all, to all. Congratulations, Connor, for your tremendous achievement of service dedication. You can unmute. Connor, are you here? Connor, are you here? Connor. Connor. The one day she takes I know off. Kelly's online. <laughs> so this right here is one of the certificates of the many that everyone's receiving today that were the Justin T. McCarthy are similar. But since we're virtual, this is right now one of them. And then Mike, do you want me to honor the other award? Yes, please. Okay, let me go down to, I typed out everything. 
So this next award is a special award. This year we're recognizing another student dear to us who was hired this year as our lead peer advisor in the seven months of her work in the office. There are no words of how valued this person in our department is to our department and all our students. This past October, we were able to hire Isabella Esaguera to help assist our student needs, especially since our major is now 495 students and 130 of you guys are graduating. Bella, you are a gem and have created such a great impression, not only by the chair, myself, and the entire faculty. Okay, sorry guys. We truly value how much you have helped assist our department with your skills and mapping out a four-year plan, advising, along with hand-holding quite a few students, my dear, and individuals who are graduating right now. And this very year especially. The list can go on from pre-graduation evaluations, study abroad questions, and even training your successor during quarantine via Zoom. No words can express how much we appreciate everything you have done for the department, your, effic your efficiency, detailed work ethics, commitments are valued by all, by us all, and have been noticed. I've had the honor of working with you this year. Congratulations, Bella, on behalf of the department for your phenomenal patience and peer advising service to our department. Everybody unmute. I have a feeling Bella has some friends that will be this loud for her. <laughs> Bella, do you want to say something? Helen, it was a blast and wave. There? Sorry, I think it was muted. There you go, Bella. There you go. All right. Okay, go again, Bella. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone, to Wayland, Dr. Knight, and Helen, for the opportunity, and for all the students for trusting me to help all of you. And it's been so much fun and such a learning opportunity. And, yeah. um, thank you, Bella. Thanks for the hard work. You did some amazing stuff. You kept a lot of people, you, you kept a lot of people on track to graduate um, this year. Um, so really, thank you very much. And to Connor, um, thank you very much also, Connor, for all the work that you did in helping us and, and keeping, um, keeping everybody in line too. Um, we're moving on um, to uh, another award and this award uh, will be introduced by Professor uh, Shreela Sarkar. Right. So happy to see everyone, um, really proud of everyone. So I am super excited to be giving a special award for voice to Isha Krishnamurti. Um, as a transfer student, Isha has used his, uh, Santa Clara education in rigorous and in creative ways, full of life and sparkle. She can be found giving an interview with KSCU or performing at open mics at the atrium in Benson. At Santa Clara, she has delved deep into examining urgent questions of diversity, intersectionality, and privilege, and in really understanding the much commonly used word at Santa Clara, compassion. In the wake of recent protests against deep-seated institutional racism in the United States, Isha, Isha Krishnamurti or Isha K's new single, available widely on Spotify, Google Play, etc., is what she calls a non-traditional love song that is a song about spreading love, joy, and compassion within the world with proceeds going to Black Voices Collective. Whether it is critical evaluation of how distributed dreams develop their organizational culture or writing about race politics in the Me Too movement, she's an excellent student. I've had Isha in a class and she thinks hard and deep about complex issues in our world today. And a conversation with her is always engaging, fun, honest and insightful. I'm so proud of her for using her voice in literal and in all the best symbolic ways possible. I'm deeply honored to give Isha Krishnamurti a special award for voice. Congratulations. Woo! And Isha, in the, um, in, in the chat, will you please give us a link to your songs so that everybody um, can check it out? And again, all those proceeds are going to 
uh, various Black Lives Matters issues. We would love to have that link so people could enjoy that beautiful song that you created. And are you here? I am, I am. Thank you so much. I'm so honored and grateful to be receiving this. First, I'd like to thank my family with that whom I never would have been able to attend or afford college in the first place. Um, I'd also really like to thank my friends and peers. I'm so excited to see all of the incredible things that you all are bound to do in the future. To the department staff, thank you so much for your never ending support and encouragement. A big concept that's emphasized within our department is the concept of intersectionality and being able to recognize how our unique identities and experiences shape the ways in which we see and interact with the world around us. All of the people I've met at SCU, specifically in the comm department, and all of the experiences I've had as a Bronco and as a comm major will definitely always be a part of what makes me who I am, and for that I am eternally grateful. So thank you everyone so much, and congratulations class of 2020. And we can unmute and give Isha a round of applause. Yeah, um, okay, so um, I have a couple of awards here to give out now um, as I uh, try to make this for you. There, fix that. Um, we have a couple uh, chairs awards that we're gonna give out, and these aren't the awards that we give out every year, um, but um, uh, sometimes students need a special call out for what we, what we consider, mm, courage, intellect, and creativity. Um, and I have two students that have done a lot of work in film in particular, um, but beyond that have engaged other aspects of the departments that I want to highlight. One of them knows she's getting this award. The other one doesn't. Um, so the second one, I'm going I'm to leave the second one for, uh, for last on this just so I shock her. Um, but uh, the first recipient is Ariel Greer. And Ariel, I, I know I saw some of your family. I hope you're here. I haven't seen you yet. Can you unmute yourself so I know you're here? Hi. <clears throat> Ooh, already okay. Well, Ariel Greer is an exceptional student who excelled in traditional studies courses and film production classes. Every day she brought a vibrancy to class that lifted the discussions and inspired her classmates and teachers. Uh, as one professor commented on her, and I'll read, I have delighted in witnessing um, her push through her natural shyness to engage deeply in her filmmaking and critical studies classes. She deeply impressed me with her willingness to be vulnerable and honest in her work. She made truly creative, engaging work, detailed oriented, nuanced, and heart-rending work. She's super smart and an excellent team player, giving thoughtful feedback and collaborating well for, for others. I also would like to add that um, I think Ariel is an, is, a, is an inspiration to me as a filmmaker as well. Her passion is undeniable. To see such a young filmmaker willing to engage some of the toughest emotional experiences of her life so that she could connect with others is a rare gift. Um, the fact that everyone wanted to be uh, uh, with her in a group, doing group work, is a testament that she's earned the highest esteem from her own peers. Um, she has this unassuming courage and confidence combined the wickedly smart mind that makes her such a joy to work with and be around. Uh, I, would, I would also like to point out that she did two particular films that I thought were absolutely amazing, an experimental film, and I think Trisha um, will, uh, um, will, will second this. That was one of probably the best experimental films we've ever seen, and it was engaging personal, heartfelt issues in her life and laying it out so that she'd connect with others. And then she made a documentary this year with uh, two other students, Miles Robinson and Naima Fonrose, uh, that was a powerful documentary about uh, a young black man on campus struggling with his identity as a black man on a predominantly white campus. So it's with, it's with great pride and honor that I award a 2020 Comm Department Chairs Award to Ariel Greer.
crier trying to keep it together <laughs> but uh first of all thank you so much for giving me this award i'm so honored um thank you for all your kind words um thank you to my professors um professors waylon and uh professor creason uh valencia in particular uh you were there for me in so many moments uh you pushed me and you made me want to work hard and you opened up a ton of opportunities for me uh, to my family, I'm so grateful for you and all the sacrifices uh, that you made that allowed me to have this education. I love you. And also my friends, uh, you gave me support, um, more support than I could ask for. So thank you. I love you, Ariel. Yes, Ariel. Okay. Congratulate, Ariel. I love you guys. <laughs> um, and Naima, why don't you unmute? Naima, are you there? Yes. Has I, your mom has something for you? Yeah. I'm crying. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> oh my goodness! Congratulations. Thank Naima, you. Naima, uh, while m uh, most of the film students had an opportunity to stick around campus um, and at least be somewhat near um, er uh, Naima. Um, had to uh, head home to Maryland um, and complete her capstone from afar. And um, she is the second recipient of the 2020 Chairs Award. Uh, and not surprisingly, she was partnered with Ariel on that amazing documentary made, um, they made in the fall um, about the, uh, the, the young gentleman on, who was a soccer player on campus. But as an African-American man, he had a very difficult time finding a, a place and he felt out of out of out of sorts and it was naima's courage it was her creativity and, and her intellect but probably most importantly her compassion which allowed i think that piece to really soar and add her voice to something that made people realize how important it is to try to reach out to people who may not feel so incredibly comfortable on this campus so naima is a fierce filmmaker in an industry where men dominate technical positions, Naima, Naima kicks some serious butt. She's an amazing cinematographer with a natural eye for the perfect shot. She's an exceptionally talented editor with a command of storytelling that few young people have. Um, she's an, a talented write editor. Um, she's a talented writer, but she's eloquent and original in what she does. Everything that comes out of her, you know, is coming from a unique perspective and it's fresh. And she does all of this while sitting quietly, not wanting to draw attention to herself. And I'm gonna miss having her in class because I knew whenever our discussions kind of either didn't go somewhere or weren't getting started, while she probably hated me for doing this, I could call on her and I know that she would add something to jumpstart our discussion and get us going. Um, I could always rely on Naima in class. I will miss that greatly. Um, like I said, her Miles and um, Ariel made such a wonderful documentary, but something outside of film is what blew me away um, with Naima. I didn't know she could act. And she had never done any acting at Santa Clara. And in her senior year, she decides to try out for one of the, uh, one of the roles of, I think only four people were in that play this year at Santa Clara. And not only that, the play then couldn't be done in person. It had to be done online. It's a play called The Revolutionists. And she took the part of an abolitionist um, in revolutionary France. And the courage it took to audition for her first play at SU during her senior year is unimaginable, let alone that she had to do it all online. Um, the director of that play sent me a note. The rehearsal process was a delight to watch. Naima took every note that I gave her and deepened the character each time she rehearsed. She consistently pushed beyond the obvious to live in the deeper places of the character's humanity. The great, hold it together, the great moments were when she let her research preparation be enlivened by her own energetic personality. When she let the characters inhabit her body, 
She worked hard every day to get to that place. Of course, the character was someone with whom she obviously had affinity for her own passion for inclusive justice fueled her engine. What a wonderful, wonderful young person. So it is with exceptional pride and honor that I give Naima Fonrose the second version of the 2020s Chairs Award. Naima? passion for film in this department through you and Trisha as well and thank you so much for both of you for pushing me to go to my greatest potential um, and thank you to my friends and all my classmates I love you so much and um, we did it and we made it so far and thank you I'm so grateful and I love you all <laughs> love you Naima yes! <laughs> Um, okay, we, uh, let me try to get uh, this there. Um, we have one more award to give, and that award is the uh, department award. The Communication Department Prize is presented to the graduating senior who best demonstrates the goals of the department, the education of the mind, the heart, and the voice. This is an award that's been given out since the department uh, started in uh, 1984, I believe. It's the oldest award we have. Um, and this year, I, um, I am proud to be able to present this to the graduating senior, Ale D'Ambrosio. Yes. Ali. Unmute yourself, Ali. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> are you are you there, Ali? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yes. If your family uh, and all also everybody, um, just because I know this would just this is it's Ali's birthday today. Yes. Um, so um birthday, why, Ali. Doesn't, why doesn't everybody unmute themselves? Happy birthday, Ali! Happy birthday, Ali. We love you. <laughs> I won't have everybody sing because you asked me not to do that. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, maybe at the end. Um, There's Uncle Kip. I, I want to say just a few things about Ali. Um, and my, my lasting image of, of Ali, uh, and let me just make sure we can get back to what we need. Um, visually. Ali, say something. Hi. That way I can make sure this video stays on you. Okay. <laughs> um, my last image of Ali is scrambling around campus in an overstuffed backpack that has seen better days, but probably holds the memories of so many amazing global experiences that she has gone on. Um, Ali is fearless. She is relentless. She's super smart and amazingly creative. So I think, and I may be wrong, so your family members can let me know if there's something I've blessed. She's a poet. She's a musician. She's a feminist, punk ethic, riot girl filmmaker who relates to a turn of the 20th century Russian filmmaker. So in general, she's not easily defined. Um, here are a few professor's attempts. In the midst of a pandemic, and sudden closing of the campus and finding yourself taking all classes online, Ali began broadcasting happiness each week to fellow students. In weekly discussions, Ali started consistently sharing her own experiences in the pandemic with a spin that brought everyone's spirit up. Then she went on to appreciate everyone else's comments, struggles, and challenges. She became a happiness coach. So in the Jesuit tradition, Ali made a difference when it mattered to so many. She did what she could, and when she couldn't, what she had wanted. Another commented, I watched her development from COM30 to experimental film to COM137, Women in, in Filmmakers of Color. 
I witnessed the creative spark catch fire for her during COM30 when she produced a powerful piece about sexual assault on campus that was layered, represented multiple voices, and super creatively produced. In my experimental class, she dug deep and produced work that was vulnerable and raw. She delighted in trying new techniques. She brings her talent for music and deep understanding of rhythm and aesthetics to her voice as a director and editor. Her writing is sharp, clear, and incisive. She is an outstanding scholar and maker. So personally, I want to tell you that it's been an honor working with you. Ali and I met first in the fall of her junior year when she decided to uh, apply for and get accepted to the Global Social Benefit Fellowship, which was going to send her to, in this case, Uganda, um, to do social benefit entrepreneurship work. And she decided, I want to make a documentary. And she had taken one class, COM30. And so we sat down, and over the next year, I witnessed somebody dive in in a way that was so engaged and so dedicated to using film as a tool of social justice, I've never seen it before. She busted her butt doing this. She went to Uganda as a one person filmmaking crew with all of that equipment stuffed in that bag and was able to produce arguably one of the best documentaries that's ever come out of that program. Um, I, I'm in awe of what she's done. Um, and hopefully all of you get a chance to actually watch that documentary. I think that experience perfectly defines Allie. She's dedicated, she's passionate, maybe a little stubborn, um, <laughs> uh, but totally and utterly committed to using her creative instincts to make the world a better place. So whether she is dumpster diving for the Office of Sustainability on campus or flying off to the developing world to help empower women, I know the world will be a better place because Allie is here to make sure. <laughs> My honor to award the 2020 department prize to Ali D'Ambrosio. Let's unmute and congratulate her. Yay! Yay! Ali. It's your turn, Ali. Okay. Um, I was asked to prepare a small Saul speech, so I will say that now. But thank you for the. You can say the words. speech, or you can say thank you oh. first. This is it's up to you. Okay, I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. This is so <laughs> kind. Thank you so much, and to all my family here. There's so many of you. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. That's so awesome. And to all the professors, thank you so much for seeing something in me and letting me believe in myself too. <laughs> And I have asked Ali, as the winner of the Comedy Department Prize, um, we, it, this is the first time we've done this, so she's kind of our guinea pig, but she's good at this, stuff like this, just kind of being thrown to the wolves. Um, we use, professors have always kind of given an address at this event, and I felt maybe this year, let's have the Comm Valedictorian give an address to her, um, her classmates, because I quite <laughs> frankly, I think all of you guys are probably tired of hearing us talk. So, Allie, um, it's, the, it's all for you now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I would wow. first like to start off by saying that I am so honored and humbled by the amazing faculty, staff, and students in the room. Thank you so, 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 so much to my family members, my mentors, my friends, and my peers. This community has consistently informed me, pushed me, and allowed me to believe in myself. I truly cannot thank you all enough. This department is full of genuine love for learning and an immense dedication to every student's success. What I have learned more than anything else through my communication major is the importance of storytelling. Stories are how we build empathy, compassion, and love across communities and cultures. Being raised in a multicultural family with parents that have lived all over the world, I have always relied on storytelling as a critical tool to understanding the world around me. By focusing on listening and beginning every interaction with a commitment to compassion, the only assumption I can continue to make is that within every person's life, there is unbelievable amounts of complexity and nuance. I believe that storytelling can and will save the world. It is the stories we tell that make us human. It is the stories we tell that get people to care. I quickly learned as the Zero Waste Intern for the Center for Sustainability how we communicate about certain issues, in my case that was garbage, makes a significant difference in how people act and internalize that information. What stories we tell people about the earth and our relationships with the earth 
is critical in shifting people's mindsets and frameworks. It is really hard to get people to care about garbage and sort, get people to sort trash with me. I learned from Professor Raphael how we communicate about the environment is critical in the fight against climate change. As a Global Social Benefit Fellow last summer, I was selected to work with social enterprise Cat Africa, located in Fort Portal, Uganda. Cat Africa facilitates women's agency and develops communities through the cultivation and distribution of passion fruit. I leaned heavily on my social science background for qualitative research methods, shout out to Dr. Ellingson, and specifically my film background because I was employed to make short documentary films for Cat Africa. Cat Africa provides young women with access to resources and knowledge so that they can effectively support themselves, their families, and their communities. To create a film that could tell this story, the story of female empowerment and global development, is everything I have ever wanted my filmmaking to accomplish. I was scared I was, would not do the job I needed to do, but once again, I leaned on my SU community, specifically the mentorship of Professor Whalen, for support and guidance, and I got to work. When taking women of, and filmmakers of color and experimental filmmaking with Professor Chris in Valencia, my eyes were opened to the importance of film as a medium for social change. It is critical to amplify diverse voices and perspectives in the film industry because it allows for stories that can really make a difference. While exploring the realm of feminist filmmaking, I was introduced to the punk ethic and the Riot Girl movement. Punk ethic and specifically Riot Girl are, is all about subverting oppressive course, cultural norms and not waiting around for someone to tell you it's okay to do something. The do-it-yourself ethic tells us we can act now and stand up for ourselves with whatever we have at our disposal. Riot Girl taught me that it's okay to be angry, it's okay to be loud, and in fact, I'm worth being heard. Now more than ever, it is critical, critical that we utilize our Jesuit education, our passion for social justice, our skills as communicators to make the world a better place. We are graduating in the midst of a global pandemic, pandemic the Me Too movement, the global climate crisis, and most pressingly, the Black Lives Matter movement. It is imperative that we utilize our knowledge and power to unleash our voices as activists and artists into the world. We are worth being heard. I'll end with the words of Lilla Watson, an indigenous Australian visual artist, activist, and academic. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound with, with mine, then let us work together. Congratulations, class of 2020. Now let's get to work. Thank you, Ali. And everybody, you know, turn your cameras on so we can see everybody's faces. Um, and uh, we're, we're just about at the end here. Um, if you have something nearby that you can toast or drink with, um, uh, or food or whatever, or um, I, I want to be able to give a, a final toast to everybody and, um, uh, and ask my, my colleagues, the, the professors they hear that if, uh, after I'm finished, if you want to jump in and say something, please go ahead and do. But I just want to tell all the students that I get asked this a lot at, at when all my friends, because we're all old men and women here, um, and they ask, like, you know, what's it like teaching 20 year olds all the time? And my comment, especially recently in light of all of the issues that are happening, I tell them it's, it's I said, it's hopeful. Uh, you know, I, I look around to all of you and I see your generation's compassion. I see your generation's tolerance for the other as so amazingly inspirational and knowing that the future of our country, of this world, on both global and local front is in phenomenal hands. And, and you know, we've just had a, a, a very small sampling of the five or six amazing students we have graduating this year. I think it's 135, I think, of you graduating this year from um, the comm department at Santa Clara. And I just want to say I'm raising a glass to you. You can't see them in my virtual background. Um, you are amazing. You have been a blessing to teach. I am honored to have been able to teach you and spend time with you. Uh, I saw a comment that I think Professor Raphael mentioned thanking Ali for teaching. Um, you taught him too. You teach us every day how to be better people and better instructors and better mentors. Go off, celebrate, have a wonderful life. Don't forget us. Come back, visit, connect. Uh, cheers. Uh, and congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. Unmute and celebrate.
So don't feel like you need to mute yourselves. Just keep going and, <laughs> and have fun. There's there's no rules anymore. No rules. Congratulations, <laughs> Della's group. Congratulations. Oh, there's somebody that wants to say hi to all of you. Congratulations. I'm the dog. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Prince and Bowie. <laughs> Prince and Bowie. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ellie says congratulations. <laughs> and, a, and a hearty um, congratulations. And, and so, hey, so seniors, just so you know, I mean, the graduation is weird, obviously. Um, but it's the weirdest for your parents because contrary to what graduates think, graduation is nothing about you. Um, it's usually about your family members. Uh, and they're the ones that really want to celebrate you. So please take the time. Hey, Riley, a um, uh, little easier for me to do that uh, um, uh, than you. Um, please take the time to reach out to your loved ones that have supported you through this journey and love them and thank them, hug them and let them know how much you appreciate them. This is the time, especially considering everything that's going on, that you oh. let them know how much you care and love and thank them for all your support. It's really important that you do that. Um, this video I will upload and we will share a link out to everybody so that um, if you have loved ones that could not watch this, um, they'll be able to. Um, but other than that, I'll leave this up for a while here um, and let people just kind of do whatever you want to do. But um, we, we, we peaked out at 95 people I saw on the, on the counter, which I think is just awesome. And it looks like, makes, looks like we may be represented in Uruguay um, uh, if, I'm, if I'm reading the screen properly. Um, so we, we, and, um, and we may be in India too. Um, uh, so we, we, we reached around the world for this celebration, which I think is wonderful. Um, congratulations, everybody. And to any of my other faculty, fellow faculty members that want to say something, please take the time. <laughs> Isn't that the way? We're all so proud of you guys. I mean, you took this quarter and, and just ran with it despite all the challenges. You should be so proud of yourselves. And we're gonna really, really miss you on campus when we're all back there. We're gonna miss all of you so much. I had, um, I'm gonna do this only because I had students sent me, some of the students sent me um, their pictures to share for the awards. Um, so I think if you can see that, Katrina and Trisha, there's Matt, there's Ashley, Isha, yeah. Ariel, Naima, and Allie. So I had to get that in on the recording. Congratulations, everyone. Beautiful job. Congratulations. Beautiful. Charlie, say bye. Oh. Congratulations, everybody. Good speech, Allie. Are you getting texts from everybody now? Okay. And thank you, uh, Nadine, for pulling off the surprise. Happy birthday, Ali Pops. Happy birthday, Ali. 
Congratulations, Avery. Thank you. Way to go, Kbert. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> we love you, Ashley. Feliz cumpleaños. Thank you, Waylon, for the great presentation and to all you great instructors. And uh, congratulations to all you graduates. You must be so proud and um, such a special time. So good luck to all of you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you to the communications department for putting this together today. I know it's kind of a weird way of doing it. It's definitely strange for me being in one room, my family's in the other room, but thank you for everyone that decided to come and join in today. I know us seniors really appreciate it and I'm sure we will all see each other soon again and we'll raise our glasses one more time for a toast. And I just want to say I'm really proud of every single one of you. All right, Ashley, yes. Woo! Feel free to stay on and chat if you want. Otherwise, um, uh, feel free also to take off. Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time out. And congratulations to the class of 2020. Very well done. Very well. Thank congratulations you. again. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all your work on this. It was really great to see everyone again. Thank you, Allie, for your help, too. Yeah, of course. It was so great to see all the professors. I miss you guys. <laughs> Hope you're feeling better, Reese. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my capstone class. I miss Woo! you guys. <laughs> we miss you too. Miss you and too. Dogs. Love you. Thank Especially you miss everything. your dogs. <laughs> they miss yes. you too, trust me. <laughs> uh, forever. Dr. Time. Yeah, we love you. Just wanted to say a quick thank you to all the professors um, and also to Wayland for putting this together as the department head. Um, you guys have really made my experience at Santa Clara what it is. So I have really loved my communication classes and everything I've learned will really carry on into my life after college. So a special thank you to each of you. You're welcome, Chloe. We love you, Ashley. Congratulations, Ashley. Congratulations, Ashley. It's not working. Congratulations, Ashley. <laughs> so Congratulations, Ariel. Congratulations, girly. Thank you. It's good to see you. <laughs> We're going to miss you guys so much. So you have to come back and visit, okay? Pinky promise. Anybody? Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> How was the knee? My knee? Yeah. Uh, well, it's not bad enough to be drugged all day, so I think that's an improvement. <laughs> Uh, poor Allie had really saw me in the thick of it. <laughs> you were pretty lucid. It was fine. <laughs> was I? It was a little like, <laughs> we had uh, like individual meetings on my third day out and it was rough. <laughs> so Naima, no, no, uh, no idea that that was coming? Pictures of Ashley. No, which is surprising because my mom is not that good at surprises. <laughs> you also owe thanks to your aunt. 
Oh, is she still here? No, I saw she was here. She also helped facilitate that. <laughs> oh man, I was really surprised, as you could see. I should tell not everybody's here. We'll send you, but the, we, um, Professor Isaac and Professor Bourne has helped put together a video with comments from all the faculty, and we'll send that out to all of you with the link. Um, so you get a chance to see all of us say something too. Who did? Art and Brenda. Oh, good. Well, folks, I'm I'm going to end it there. Thank you, everybody. Good Bye. luck. Bye. Have a wonderful Thanks. Have a wonderful week. Stay strong. Congratulations. Thank you. Woo! Way to go, kids.